Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's been on the hook. Well as you can see I'm wearing my new Kimberly cowl. I promised this on Instagram and last week on Monday so I am finally coming out with it. The pattern will be released this afternoon and those of you in the community will receive a special email for uh, this particular cowl and you can actually use the discount in the email on anything in my Etsy shop, including my newest release of anything and all of my uh, previous releases as well. So you can use that discount on any, any pattern in my shop. So that's my little gift to you. And that will be coming out this afternoon. So be looking for that if you're in the community. If you're not, go down and sign up to be in the community and you will receive the discount for my Etsy shop. So do that. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. I guess some people forget to hit the like button. I do it myself, but it does help YouTube know that you liked my video and they might show it to some other folks. So that's very helpful to the channel owners and it's, it's a wonderful thing that you can do. Just hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. That also helps YouTube know that you like what I'm putting out. And that helps me as well. So be sure to do that. Now, about the Kimberly cow. I will release the pattern this afternoon, so be looking for that. So about the Kimberly cowl, I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. It is very easy to make. It is a one row repeat. It is not difficult to make. Believe me, it's not. Now what I made it from was the Red Heart Colorscapes yarn, and this is how much I had left from one skein. This took one skein of yarn to make. It is quite substantial. It is a pretty good sized cowl. It's probably about eight inches deep, and you can of course make it deeper than that, but it's eight inches deep and right about 28 to 30 inches around uh, in the circle. So that'll give you some idea of the size of the cowl. Now I made this from the Colorscape Red Heart yarn in the uh, colorway Dublin. It's, you know, Dublin, Ireland. So that is the colorway. It's chartreuse and green, um, different colors of purple. Very, very pretty. And it does have a tiny bit of blue in it too. So this would be perfect to wear with jeans or with black. You can wear with anything <clears throat> pretty much. I uh, am wearing it with chartreuse, of course, because that's one of my favorite colors. But uh, it will go with lots of other colors as well. So I love this Dublin color. Now, I made the Crescent Moon Shawl from the Colorscapes Red Heart in the colorway Rome. And this is also quite beautiful. It has a, a little bit of a kind of a yellow chartreuse in there, a little bit more yellow, a little bit of gold, some purple. Um, some other colors in here that are quite gorgeous as well. So if you want to look at my pattern out on Etsy, um, it's done in this Red Heart Colorscapes yarn. And the, the Crescent Moon Shawl took more than one skein. I believe it took two skeins. It took two skeins to make. But this cowl takes one skein. So there you go. That kind of shows you what I did with that. And I also... Um, I made it with an L hook, so just so you'll know, um, if you don't have a set of hooks, you should probably have them because that way you can decide what size hook you want to make things with. You don't have to go right by the pattern. You can use a K hook, you can use an MN hook, you can use any hook you want. Um, I believe that I, I chained up with a bigger hook and then I used a smaller hook for the fabric of the cowl. But let me get it up a little closer for you to see. This is a modified, kind of a shell stitch um, pattern across here. And it's not difficult to do because it's only one row repeat. That means that when you get to the end of the row, you turn around and you do the same thing again. You don't have to remember two or three different rows, patterns, and uh, stitches, things like that. All you have to do is remember one row and really just one section of that row you have to repeat over and over again. So the pattern repeat is very short and it's also one row. So that's a little bit easier than some that I've run into. Um, I made one from a knit crate pattern not too long ago and it was several row repeat. It wasn't difficult to make. I want to put patterns out that are not difficult to make, but you can make beautiful 
garments and accessories. If you let the yarn work for you, like buying a, um, a gradient yarn or a yarn that is multicolored, and this, uh, it does help. And also this yarn that I found is um, very easily graduated from one color to the next. So when you hold it up, it doesn't have abrupt changes in color. They, um, they fade gently into each other. It's quite beautiful. I really, really like this yarn. Now, it is not wool. It's 100% acrylic. It is not wool. As somebody asked me that on my video from Monday, it is not wool. It looks like wool. It's very uh, soft though. It's not scratchy at all and I really really like it. It's a number four weight yarn and it's a, a, a very substantial four weight yarn. It's not like almost a three. It's a four weight, full four weight yarn. Um, on the ball is 187 yards and that is enough to make the Kimberly Cow. So just so you'll know that. Also um, this week I released my Highlander pattern and I had lots of uh, ladies uh, go on my Instagram account and tell me they really liked it. Um, a lot of people have picked it up. That's been great. And the Highlander was a um, long time project. I worked on it for quite a while and I really, really enjoyed making it. I made it twice at the same time. And if y'all have been following me, you'll know that I was working on a beige version, which is this one. I was working on a beige version and I was also working on the green and chartreuse version in the Highlander yarn from James Brett. Both are made from James Brett yarn. And um, in the description box, I will put a link to where you can find that. I'm not associated with them. I'm not an affiliate. You can buy it. Um, the, the, in fact, the green yarn is only available on eBay at this point. Um, if you really want it, you have to jump out there and get it because it is only available on eBay. The The brown marble yarn is available on lovecrafts.com. So those are easy to find. You just Google it, you can find them that way too. I did have some ladies that said they did not like the beige. I totally get it. Uh, and they didn't like the green. And one lady said she wanted to make it in pink. So. Here is the pink marble yarn. I have three balls of this and I haven't made anything with it yet. I may have to wait till next winter. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But it took two balls of this and this is what I have left of the beige. So I have an almost a full ball of beige. So it takes about two balls of this and on each ball is 341 yards. So that's uh, 680 yards of the number five yarn. Now, if you make it out of a smaller yarn, obviously it's going to take you more yarn to make it. But in the number five, that's how much it took me to make the Highlander sweater. So uh, this pattern went out, uh, I guess it was yesterday. And those of you in the community will have received an email from me with a special discount on that as well. So those are the two most recent releases. Uh, she's been standing in the corner over there and has been wearing all of my scarves. <laughs> so I took the scarves off and I thought I would bring her in and let her model my essential sweater. And I've had lots of people say they love this. And I'm going to make this hopefully not too long from now. I'm going to make this in a, a maybe a cotton lightweight yarn. And that way I can wear it for spring and summer. And I'll still have a boxy sweater. It won't be too hot. And, you know, we could even make it short sleeves like that. I think that would be cute as it could be. So I might do that. I'm working on another sweater now, and I'll, I'll show that to you later in the video. But um, working on another sweater that's um, totally different from this. So <laughs> I'm doing some different things. Also, I wanted to show you, someone asked me about the cuff. And it's not easy to see on video, but it is in person. It's a, a cuff that's about this long. It's about four inches long. And it's a different stitch from the stitch in the sleeve. So it makes it a little bit different down here at the bottom. I really like that. I did the neck as well in that same stitch. She looks, she looks good in a black turtleneck, so I stuck that on her. This is made from the Ice Yarns uh, Sail Winter Yarn. I don't know if y'all can still find this or not. It's a white uh, yarn with black mohair wrapped around it. And it turned out really nice in my sweater. I don't know if you can see that. 
it's very subtle, the black and white. Um, together, it's very, very subtle. It has a very, very nice drape. So, um, I really, I really like the way it turned out. That's one of my favorite sweaters right there is the Essential Sweater. And the yarn is actually 20% mohair, 25% wool, and 45% acrylic. So, I don't expect it to stretch too much. I think it'll probably be fine. I did not block this sweater. I don't always block my sweaters and um, rarely block them actually because I try to put enough drape in there where I don't have to block it. But I know some people say, you've got to block your sweaters. And, you know, that's true. If you want to block it, it might soften it up a little bit and cause your stitches to blend a little bit better. But I like the look of it the way it was, so I did not block it. But that's certainly up to you if you want to block your sweaters or your scarves. Um, I obviously didn't block this because it's all acrylic. You don't have to block it. And it, if you blocked it, it wouldn't look much different, if, if any different, than the way it looks right now. So there's no need to spend the time on that. Now I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, a few pieces of Happy Mail that I received. And I won't take long for this because I don't want to go over every single little thing. But I do like to mention when ladies send me things in the mail. It's very, very sweet and so much fun to go to my post office box and find things in there. So I received a very beautiful thank you card from Jean Hanscom, and I hope she didn't mind me telling you her last name, but um, she had won something in a giveaway and was so sweet to write me a thank you note and um, thanks for the giveaway. So that was very sweet of you, Jean. Thank you. And I received a beautiful um, wooden, let me get this off here, a beautiful wooden pin which is quite lovely. I've used it several times. It's real pretty, and um, I'm going to use it on my planner. I have a Franklin planner that I use, and I've got a little spot that I can put my new pen in, so thank you very much. That's from Myrna of Ohio, and so sweet. Thank you very, very much for that. Very nice present. And then I received a hat from Lisa Wigginton, and she's very, very sweet, too, to make this for me. And it's got a pretty label on it, handmade handmade with love and one of these I love these things I need to order some for me because when I make something I need to put that on there but the hat is quite beautiful it's got a pretty little pom-pom on it and it's done in a very beautiful stitch as well and made from the Karen Simply Soft Sparkle Yarn in um, Spring Green I think is the, the name of it so thank you very much Lisa very nice she has a YouTube channel called Lisa's Chalet Creations, so you might check her out. Um, I will put a link to her uh, YouTube channel down below, and you can check her out. Thank you very much, Lisa. Very sweet present to send me. Very, very sweet. Thank you. And last but not least, I received the um, Knit Crate last month in this particular color, and it was called Concrete Jungle and Bushwick, and those were the two colors, the two hanks of yarn that came in my Knit Crate box. And frankly, they just looked like 70s colors to me. I don't know why, I just did not like them. So when I started complaining about it, which I shouldn't have done, but <laughs> I complained. One of my subscribers wrote to me and wrote an email and said she would swap with me because she liked that color, and she makes hats for um, people who might appreciate that color, maybe people that grew up in the 70s. So she offered to swap with me, and I received my yarn. It is so beautiful. Look, and she even caked it for me. How sweet is that? These are the two blues that uh, came together in the knit crate box, and she also put a really pretty stitch marker on there for me. And thank you so much, Tina. That was so sweet of you to do that. So we swapped, and I sent her my yarn and she sent me hers so i'm all squared away and you know i was thinking i might make a kimberly cowl out of one of these i don't know which they're both very similar and they're both the same yardage and everything but i think i'm going to do that with that just so i can have something made up in my knit crate yarn because i do like to make it up i don't always make it in the pattern that comes with the box but i do like to make it up now i have a few uh, hanks of yarn over there that I have not made, but it's just because I'm pretty busy and sometimes I don't get around to it. But I do um, like the Knit Crate monthly subscription. I'm not sponsored. Don't worry about that. 
I just wanted to tell you that because I really like getting that. That's a high quality yarn that comes in that box and it's, you know, only 25 bucks and it includes shipping and everything. And you get two hanks of yarn, which um, to me is a bargain. And it's always beautifully done. It's all hand dyed and they send a booklet with um, different patterns in it. And it's always such a really nice box. So I look forward to getting that every month and thank you tina for swapping with me uh, i usually don't make that mistake but i didn't change it in time on their website so thank you for helping out with that i appreciate that so much the next thing i want to talk about is my projects that are in the works and let me get my roll my chair around here because i have a couple of things going on and um one thing i did was i found this in my stash. I knew it was there, but I have s several hanks of it. It's the Natology Sheen in the Titmouse color, and I made a scarf out of this, and I wear it quite often. Um, get a lot of compliments on it. Somehow the colors here just blend beautifully together in that scarf, and I want to show it to you. If you haven't seen this on my channel before, I, I wanted to show this to you. This is the yarn so you never know when you get a hank of yarn what it's going to look like when you when you cake it up and then when you crochet it it's going to look different now look at that that uh, you know i like it it's beautiful and all but when you crochet it and cake it and crochet it this is what it looks like is that amazing or what the colors just blend so beautifully together and i was just so enamored with this because it is so different from this look at that I mean, this is what it turned out to be. Now, I made this by the pattern that came in the Knit Crate box. And forgive me if you all already heard me talk about this, but um, this is the pattern that came in the Knit Crate box. And I used the yarn to make it up because it was one of the very first boxes that I received and I was so excited. I thought, I'm going to make that. And I did run out of yarn before the end of it, but um, I just finished up and uh, put the edging on it and, you know, tried to do the best I could. But it could be that I made it in one hook size a tiny bit larger than what they call for. But, you know, I don't think so. I think I went back and checked. But I just basically ran out of yarn. But I wanted to show you that because when you buy a hank of yarn, you really don't know what it's going to look like unless it's made up. And so when you go to a fiber festival and you see a scarf made up and the certain hank of um, yarn that they use to make it, it's great if you can see how it's already made up so that you're not looking at this going, oh, I'm not sure I like that. And when I got it, I didn't like it because I thought that's kind of an odd, you know, combination of things. But when I made it up, this is what it looked like. I absolutely love this scarf. I wear it quite often, actually. I wear it quite often. But before we started, I wanted to show you that because I want to make something out of this. And I think if this isn't too busy, I might make a spring sweater out of it. It is wool, but it's very, very comfortable and squishy. I wear it year round, honestly. I wear this with jeans and a yellow shirt, um, a gray shirt and jeans. I wear this quite often, and I think it would be fine in the spring. So I'm going to maybe, one of my plans is to hank this up and make a sweater from it and that's what the sweater will look like so I have a really good idea of what I'm working with instead of looking at this going I really don't know how that's going to work itself up so that was just something I wanted to tell you sometimes when you see a hank of yarn hanging up somewhere in a shop or in a fiber festival you really don't know how it's going to look until it's made up so just keep that in mind if the colors are right it's probably going to be okay but um, anyway I wanted to tell you about that I'm designing a new pattern, and this is a sweater that is a v-neck sweater. Now, I had some requests for v-neck sweaters on along in the last couple of months, and I've never done one because I always just do the boat neck or the round neck, scoop neck, square neck, but I haven't done a v-neck. So, I wanted to show you what I was working on. This is an orange chenille with black stripes and the black stripes are just um, red heart I think I'm using red heart on this actually or it might be a wool I think I'm using a wool sorry I think I'm using a wool black for the stripe but um, this is what it looks like and let me just show you the front of it if you can see that it's going to have a v-neck on it and it's going to look like this this is just not a boxy sweater 
It's also not very fitted either. You try it on a few times and I have tried it on and it looks like it's going to be okay. This is a little bit more fitted. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more fitted. It probably has four inches of ease all the way around. It's about mid hip length. And of course you can make it as long or wide as you want. And you know my patterns don't have stitch counts. So you can do whatever you want and make it out of any yarn that you want to make it from. And this one in particular is made from an ice yarn that I bought a while back. And it's called Chenille Wool Flamme. It's only 15% wool, 85% acrylic. But this is what it looks like. It is a burnt orange with black mohair wrapped around, just like the white that I bought with, that I made the essential sweater from. It was white yarn with black mohair wrapped around. So this is the burnt orange color. Very beautiful. I like the way it's made up. It's turned out really pretty. It's a little bit flashy here with the mohair, but that's okay. It all blends and it's across the whole sweater. So as long as it looks like it's meant to be that way, I'm okay with it. So I'm about halfway through with that. And Right now, I'm planning to make it a short sleeve sweater with maybe a roll up edge on the sleeve. So, you know, a little bit more substantial. The sleeve will not be huge right here. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger than my arm and I'm going to go straight down with it. So, that's my plan. I think that's going to be a good plan for that particular sweater. Um, so, that's where I am right now. Another thing I'm working on is a Knit Picks. Capra DK wool sweater and this is cashmere. This is 85% merino wool and 15% cashmere. It is very very soft. I really like it. I wish I'd gotten a different it goes this way. I wish I'd gotten a different color. This is a, a light gray. It's very colorless. I could have made it out of white and it probably would have looked just as good but I bought this thinking that it was going to be something I really liked. I like it okay, but I'm going to pair it with a dark charcoal of the same exact wool. I'm just, uh, it's just a different color. So I'm going to make a color block sweater using these two colors together and separate them with black. So it'll be a very non-sweater. <laughs> I probably, I would like to make it out of something a little brighter. And I have some more nitpicks up there that a friend gave me and I'm thinking about maybe using that as part of the color block on a different sweater. But right now I'm making this sweater and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to make it and we'll see where we go from there. But here's what it looks like so far. This is the back or the front, either one of the sweater. It is done in single crochet. It's fairly dense. I chained up with an L hook which is a, an eight millimeter hook. This is my clover hook, my pink hook. I'm crocheting the fabric in a K hook, which is 6.5 millimeter, and that's my green hook there. So those are the two hooks that I'm using for it so far. And if I put trim around the neck or whatever, I'll probably use a smaller trim hook on this. But this is a DK weight, and it's got a pretty good drape to it, even though it's fairly thick. It's got a pretty good drape to it, so I'm not too worried about that. It has taken me a long time to make this particular um, stretch of fabric, and it now I'm working on my second ball. The first ball came to here. I put a marker there so I would remember to check it because I want to be sure I have enough yarn to finish the sweater, and it may have to do with how I design it if I have enough yarn. Uh, if I don't want to order any more, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. But anyway, this is how far I got with the first ball. And, you know, if you're designing a sweater on your own, which is what y'all do with my pattern outlines, you design your own sweater, um, be sure to keep track of how far you were able to crochet with one skein or one ball of yarn. That way you'll know where you're going. And if you're not able to get any more yarn and you are going to run out, then you have to do a plan B, whether either you frog it out or you put short sleeves in it or make it shorter or however you want to do it. But 
Um, you can design it according to how much yarn you have, or you can just order more yarn and make it the way you intended to at the beginning. So those are the two projects I'm working on right now. I want to finish those fairly soon. I don't want them to languish over here in my whipped collection. I do have some whips from fall that I started in some comfy cotton, and I'm probably pick those back up here in the next few weeks and finish them for spring. So I'll be doing that as well. That is my works in progress section of the video. Now, what I wanted to do was, uh, as a favor to a friend, do something special in my video. And what I've done before is I have shown you this project bag um, that a friend of mine is making. And I've tried to get her to open an Etsy shop and she's just on the verge of doing that. She hasn't really decided where she's going with it, but she did tell me yesterday that she would make custom bags. So several of y'all have emailed to her and asked her for custom bags, and she's making those. So she will give you a price, and you can tell her which fabric you want to use, and she'll give you some suggestions. And that way you can have a custom bag made by Joe Totes, and that's the name of her company, J-O-T-O-T-E-S, Joe Totes and they're tote bags that my friend Joe makes. So this is one of the bags, and I showed this, I believe it was last week or the week before, that I really, really like this bag. I bought it at Christmas time, and she had just brought some bags to our bell rehearsal, and I bought this one from her. It has pockets on the sides. It's got actually two pockets here on the side, a big pocket in the front. It's got her signature medallion on it, and the medallion always matches the bag it is made from felt and beads. It is hand sewn, and underneath it is a snap to open um, to open the pocket, and then of course it snaps back. But that is a beautiful, beautiful bag. I love the way she designed it, and um, I'm not making a commission on any of this. I just love her work. I'm a seamstress too, and I appreciate someone who takes the time to make their items very very special and Joe does that I appreciate that very much so one of uh, my subscribers named Melanie she ordered a bag from Joe and Joe has finished it and Melanie asked us to show it on my video so I'm going to show this to you this is a bag that Melanie ordered It's a custom order for her and Joe made this for her this week and it's quite beautiful it's done in an owl print let me get this up here where you can see it see the little owls on there and then a coordinating print here her signature medallion on the front now what joe has also done is she has embroidered on her machine across the piping on the 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 front pocket and also along the straps she's embroidered there quite beautiful all the detail on here is amazing i and it's got a dark bottom, which is sort of her signature as well, because when you set it on the floor, you don't want it to show dirt any more than you have to. This is, of course, a custom bag, so there's one pocket on the side. All of the fabric is hand quilted by machine. Every bit of the fabric is quilted, so it stands up really nice by itself. And the detail is amazing on here. At the end of the zipper, she has put a tab on here with one of the owls from the fabric. <laughs> and then also where the where the handle attaches to the bag, she's done the same thing there and there. And then two on the other side as well. Very, very cute. And attention to detail is amazing. There is a stitch marker on the zipper pull here. And as you open up the zipper, the inside is a muslin fabric very sturdy it has a clear pocket on the inside so you can see what's in your pocket you're not digging around in there i love the clear vinyl for pockets i just think that's a real plus she has a ring here with some stitch markers on it you can attach your stitch markers to on the inside of your bag so you're not digging around looking for those and as a special touch she has made melanie a um, a small bag to go inside the large bag and you can open it like this and then it snaps shut like that it stays closed and it has two little tabs on there so you can pull it apart put your things in there or take them out and then snap it closed 
I think that's awesome. And this is the coordinating bag that matches the edging around the clear plastic pocket inside. So I just thought that was just really special. And I am glad to show this on my channel because I will put Joe's email address down in the description box. She makes these custom right now. And she may be opening an Etsy shop soon. So um, if you want a custom bag, now is the time to get it. So now what we need to do is select our winner for the giveaway that we started on Monday. Giveaway winner number one will receive Lotus Blossom by a shawl on the ball. This is the color way. So gorgeous. That pink is just outstanding. Like I said, I've made something out of that and it turns out very beautifully. The second giveaway winner will receive wind chimes, which is in the blue colorway in the shawl on the ball. Very beautiful as well. Winner number three will receive the book Yarn is a Lifestyle. And this is a stash book. This is how you keep track of your stash. And you just enter your stash different types of yarn here and you'll know what you have on your shelf or in a box or in a basket or wherever you keep your stash and also the third giveaway winner will receive a copy of crochet magazine this is the spring edition it's got some gorgeous patterns in here and uh, it's just fun to have a crochet magazine i just love crochet magazines i just do i love them now let's pick our giveaway winner and then i want to tell you one other thing that we're going to do next week so let's turn our camera to the computer and find out who wins the three giveaway prizes this week okay so here we are at our computer and i have typed in the url for monday's video here we are going to filter comments based on a text we're also going to filter duplicate users so highlander is the keyword that we use this week so let's get the number of youtube comments and by the way, I read all your comments last night, and I hearted each one that I read, which should be every one. Here we have 669 um, YouTube comments that will be in the giveaway. So let's go over here and start to find out who wins the first giveaway, which is the Lotus Blossom shawl in the ball. So let's see who wins that. And that would be Tammy Upton. So congratulations to you. Let's pick another winner. Tammy Upton, congratulations. All right. Let's start. And let's find out who wins the Shawl on the Ball in Wind Chimes colorway. Dona Bell. So Dona, you have won the Shawl on the Ball in Wind Chimes. So let's pick another winner. This is the winner that will receive the Crochet Magazine and the Stash Booklet. All right, here we go. And this winner is Annika Karam. Annika Karam, you are the winner of the Crochet Magazine and the Stash Booklet. So congratulations to the winners, and I'm excited for you. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much for entering everyone and for your beautiful comments. Like I said, I read every single one. So thank you for sending me these comments. I use those to design my sweaters. I use those to get good ideas about what y'all would like me to do. And so I appreciate the comments about what I've already done and things that you suggest that you'd like me to do in the future. So thank you for all the comments that you send and for the well wishes. I have been sick. I've been trying to shake this virus for i don't know over a week now or a week and a half and it's still hanging around just a little bit and that's why my voice is a little bit low it goes low when i have congestion so i'm sorry i sound so kind of in a tunnel but i i feel pretty good i just have a little bit of a runny nose so thank you for your well wishes and for your prayers for my recovery thank you so much it was such a tiny thing uh, i know there's so many people that have many more problems than I do. So I'm just grateful and thankful that I'm fairly healthy and things are going along pretty well for me right now. So I wanted to tell you too that this is the season of the granny and y'all know me very well. Um, you uh, ladies out there know that I am not a granny person. I do not like the granny stitch so much because I used to do it all the time 
and I've made so many things with granny squares that you can't even count them because that's what mostly crocheters used to do. And it is a throwback, a little bit of one, and there are different iterations now of the granny square, and um, I like to call them motifs. A motif is a one piece of a design, and you might make 10 motifs and sew them together, and that's what a granny square is. It's really a motif, and it's mostly crochet. I know there are some knitters that do it, but um, it's a it's a good stitch to learn crochet on. It's a good stitch to create different things like blankets and scarves and things like that. But I'm not a huge fan of it. I do like motif work though, and I've done lots of that in my lifetime. Um, I've made um, doilies. I've made granny afghans. I've done all of that. But I've moved on and I really am not excited about granny squares, although it's a beautiful form of crochet. I don't have a problem with that at all, but in what I'm designing now really doesn't lend itself to motif crocheting, although you never know in the future I might do something like that. But what I want to do for the granny, the season of the granny in order to participate with the other YouTubers is to bring out a sweater that I made for my mother. Um, many 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 years ago I was eight years old and I made this sweater out of granny squares and next week I'm going to show that sweater I brought it home with me when my mom was sick and she was 94 years old and I knew that I needed to grab that sweater because um, it might disappear if something happened to my mom so I wanted to bring that home with me and I'm glad that I did I wrapped it in plastic we had been in plastic and I brought it home with me and hung it in the closet when Glenda from Creative Grandma mentioned that um, she was part of a sponsorship for the season of the granny, I thought of that sweater and um, some of my friends said, you need to show that on your YouTube channel and that way you can participate but you won't have to make anything with granny squares, you can just show that. It's a beautiful sweater and I want to show that to you maybe next week um, when I have a little bit more time. I've used a lot of your time already. I hope you were working on a crochet project. <laughs> while I was talking to you but since I wasn't on video on Wednesday this week I was you know busy and out of town so I thought I would try to do everything today and it ran into a very long video and I apologize for that but I'll be back on Monday and I have an idea for a giveaway that I hope you all like and maybe some progress on my projects and some other things as well so I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I plan to as well I um, am going to Knoxville on Sunday and watch my third grandson be baptized. It'll be very, very wonderful. So we're all excited about that. And um, that'll be my Sunday and a wonderful, wonderful day it will be. So join me Monday to find out what's on the hook.